Iran has supplied Russia with ballistic missiles, UK. The UK believes Iran has supplied Russia with ballistic missiles, Defense Secretary Grant Shapps indicated, according to Politico, in an interview with the House magazine, the senior minister confirmed that Britain has information on the reported provision of surface-to-surface -surface missiles from Iran to Russia, but declined to get into the details. The Reuters news agency reported in February that the Iranian regime had supplied Russia with a large number of ballistic missiles, a report that sparked a swift warning from the US that, if true, Iran would be greeted with a severe response from the international community. Iran publicly denied supplying Russia with the missiles. Speaking this week, Shaps suggested Britain has intelligence backing up the claim. I do. I can't get into it. Shaps told the House magazine when asked if he had any information on Iran's provision of ballistic missiles to Russia. But whether it's ballistic missiles or the Shahed drones that they supplied Russia with, we've seen that if there's struggle in the world, often Iran are egging it on or helping to supply the food chain in this case, he said. Shaps added, they are a bad influence, not just on their region, but in this case in Europe as well. Any supply of missiles from Iran to Russia would indicate a strengthening of military ties between the two countries. Tehran initially held off from offering Russia missiles due to the threat of further sanctions. Bandera, Stalin, Princess Olga of Kiev, Musk and Orban. What Putin told Carlson about. The widely publicized interview of Vladimir Putin by American journalist Tucker Carlson turned out to be nothing more than another repetition of the Russian president's well-worn rhetoric. Putin talked about Stalin, complained about Bandera and Shukhevich, accused Ukraine of attacking Russia and mentioned Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. The interview began with a half-hour interpretation of Ukraine's history by Putin. He reiterated his narrative that Ukraine was created by Vladimir Lenin, but now, according to his version, Ukraine was formed by Joseph Stalin as a result of World War II. Putin devoted 25 minutes to presenting his own history, despite the fact that the interview itself lasted just over two hours. During this historical briefing, the Hungarian Prime Minister was unexpectedly mentioned. Putin claimed that Hungarians in western Ukraine supposedly wanted to return to Hungary, but when Carlson asked if he had sent such proposals to Orban, he replied in the negative. Putin also mentioned Princess Olga of Kiev and Vladimir the Great during his discussion with Carlson about how Russians, who are deeply rooted in Christianity, supposedly very loyally treat people of other faiths and Russian authorities have always carefully treated other cultures and religions. Of course, Putin and Carlson did not bypass the topic of the war that Russia unleashed in Ukraine. Putin made it clear that he does not want the war to end because he has not achieved the goals set. In this context, the Russian president again mentioned the so-called denazification and this time even explained its purpose, not forgetting about Stefan Bandera and Roman Shukhevich. In addition, Putin told Carlson a tale about how Russia was not admitted to NATO, the idea of creating a joint missile defense system for Russia, Europe and the US, which he allegedly presented to former US President George W. Bush and about the fate of American journalist Gershkovich, who is currently behind bars in Russia, blaming the Central Intelligence Agency for the sabotage of the Nord Stream pipelines. He also praised the owner of SpaceX, Elon Musk, calling him a smart person with whom it is necessary to find common ground and cooperate. U.S. struck Houthi cruise missiles and drones in Yemen. The U.S. has launched a series of strikes against Houthi cruise missiles and surface drones in Yemen, according to the U.S. Central Command. The U.S. Central Command, CENTCOM, forces conducted seven self-defense strikes against four Houthi unmanned surface vessels and seven mobile anti-ship cruise missiles that were prepared to launch against ships in the Red Sea, the U.S. Central Command said. It is reported that the U.S. military detected these missiles and unmanned surface vessels in Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen and determined they presented an imminent threat to U.S. Navy ships and merchant vessels in the region. 
These actions will protect freedom of navigation and make international waters safer and more secure for U.S. Navy and merchant vessels. Since November of last year, there have been ongoing attacks by Yemeni Houthis on trade ships in the Red Sea, often associated with Israel. In January, the terrorist group launched its most significant attack. The U.S. and British military repelled an attack in the Red Sea in early January. At the beginning of January, the U.S. and Britain conducted powerful strikes against Houthi-related targets in Yemen. This was in response to the constant attacks by the Houthis on civilian ships in the Red Sea. On January the 28th, a Houthi drone in the Red Sea attacked a British military ship, and the next day, the Yemeni Houthis claimed to have attacked an American destroyer. However, the Pentagon refuted the militant's claim. Also, on February the 6th, it was reported that a British cargo ship was attacked by the Houthis in the Red Sea.